light introduction a form of energy that gives the sensation of sight is called light it is a form of energy observe a beam of light entering your room through the window or light coming through the bulb of a torch they are all seen moving in straight line rectilinear propagation of light the beam of light is seen as straight lines the light travels in a straight line this characteristic of light is called rectilinear propagation of light you can see a light source only if a straight line path is available from the source up to your eyes if the path is bent anywhere you cannot see the source of light to show that light travels in a straight line take a candle light it and place it on a table now look at the lighted candle first through a straight pipe and then through a bent pipe you observe that you are not able to see the candle flame through a bent pipe this is because light travels along a straight path reflection of light when a ray of light travels from one optical medium to another optical medium say from air to glass few situations can arise the ray of light may be returned by the second optical medium into the first optical medium with a change in angle this phenomenon is called reflection of light the ray of light may get absorbed by the medium the ray may pass through the second optical medium with a change in angle this phenomenon is called refraction of light it may be pointed out that all these phenomenon can take place at the same time it means a part of light energy can be reflected and a part absorbed and a part refracted reflection is that phenomenon which causes the formation of images there are a few basic requirements for reflection to take place they are a source of light a shiny surface from which reflection can take place the rays that fall on the surface is said to be the incident ray and the ray reflected from the surface is called reflected ray take a plane mirror with a stand and place it vertically on a table direct the light from a torch towards the mirror from one corner of the room you will find that the light rays traveling in a straight line from the torch are reflected back by the mirror now look into the mirror along the direction from which light is coming after reflection from the mirror it appears that reflected light is coming from a torch present inside the mirror the torch visible inside the mirror is the image of the torch present outside the mirror this shows that images are formed inside shining surfaces by the process of reflection from the activity we can conclude two more characteristics of the images formed by a plane mirror the image is formed at the same distance from the mirror as the object is kept in front of it the image formed by a plane mirror cannot be obtained on a screen all luminous objects both natural and artificial are called sources of light while the sun and the stars are the natural sources of light an electric bulb or tube light is an artificial source of light the light emitted by these sources travels in straight line a narrow path of light presented by a straight line is called the ray of light a thick ray of light is called a beam of light it can be classified as parallel beam a beam of light where all the light rays are parallel to each other are called a parallel beam of light convergent beam a beam of light which comes from a broad source of light and converge at a point is called convergent beam of light divergent beam a beam of light which comes from a small source and diverge out is called a divergent beam of light for example light coming out from a torch electric bulb front light of the car etc types of images an image of an object can be real virtual erect or inverted the various types of images are real image an image that is formed on the screen is said to be real image an image formed by a projector in the cinema hall on the screen is an example of real image virtual image an image that appears to be formed behind the mirror is said to be virtual image such an image moves towards or away from the mirror if the position of the object is changed erect mirror an image is said to be erect if the image is exactly similar and upright as the object inverted image 
An image that is not upright is inverted. Lateral inversion. Have you ever observed yourself in the mirror? Your left hand appears to be right hand and right hand appears to be left. Have you seen that the word ambulance written on the car? It is written as, but the same word appears as ambulance on the mirror of the one driving in front of it. This shifting of right hand as left and vice versa is said to be lateral inversion. The characteristics of an image formed by a plane mirror, the image is virtual, it is erect, it is of the same size as the object, it appears to be as much behind the mirror as it is in front of it, it is laterally inverted. Uses of plane mirrors Plane mirrors are extensively used in our daily life. Some of their important uses are, it is used to see the image of ourselves, it is used as reflectors in solar cookers, it is used in making kaleidoscopes and periscopes, it is used as side mirror in cars, trucks, buses, etc. Spherical mirrors Any reflecting surface which is the part of a sphere is said to be a spherical mirror. The nature of images formed by spherical mirrors is different from that formed by plane mirrors. The reflecting surface of a spherical mirror can be either the outside or the inside of the curved surface depending on the silvered side. Spherical mirrors can be of two types, concave mirror and convex mirror. If the reflecting surface is inside, then such a mirror is called a concave mirror. If the reflecting surface is outside, it is called the convex mirror. Some terms related to spherical mirror. Pole. The geometrical center of the spherical mirror is called its pole. Center of curvature. The center of the sphere of which the spherical mirror forms a part is called the center of curvature. Radius of curvature. The line joining the pole and the center of curvature is the radius of curvature. Principal axis. An imaginary line passing through the pole and center of curvature is known as the principal axis. To show the image formed by spherical mirror, take a clean steel silver spoon and hold the hollow side of the spoon close to your face. You will find that the image formed is erect. Now, move the spoon away from your face. At some distance, the image of your face will be clearly visible which is inverted, magnified and enlarged. On further moving the spoon away from your face, you will notice that the image of your face is inverted and diminished in size. Now, turn the protruding side of the spoon and bring it first closer to your face and then away from it. You will find that in both the cases, the image formed is erect and diminished in size. The size of the face goes on increasing in size as the spoon is moved away from the face. So, it can be concluded that in the first case, spoon acts as a concave mirror, whereas in the second case, it acted as a convex mirror. Uses of convex mirror It is used as a rear view mirror in vehicles because it forms an erect and highly diminished image irrespective of the position of traffic behind. It is used as a reflector in street lamps. It is used as vigilance mirror in departmental stores. Uses of concave mirror It is used as a shaving mirror and as doctor's head mirror. It is used as reflector in projectors, lighthouses, car headlights, etc. It is used in floodlights. Lens A lens is a transparent medium with two curved surfaces. A lens can be concave, convex and a combination of various types of lens. A convex lens converges the rays of light at a point and is called a converging lens whereas a concave lens appears to diverge rays of light from a point and is called a diverging lens. Based on their converging and diverging abilities, lenses are extensively used in spectacles. Take a convex lens and put it in the path of sun rays. Place a sheet of paper on the other side of the lens. Adjust the distance between the lens and the paper till you get a bright spot on the paper. Hold the lens and the paper in this position for 2 minutes. Be careful because the paper may start burning at that point. Now, replace the convex lens with a concave lens. You will find that this time no such spot appears on the paper. 
In the first case, the spot formed on the paper is actually the image of the sun formed on the screen by the lens. Therefore, it is a real image. This point is called the principal focus F of the lens. A converging lens bends a ray of light passing through it inward towards the principal axis. It makes all rays parallel to principal axis converge to a single point called the principal focus of the lens. In the second case, no bright spot is seen on the paper because concave lens has the property of bending a ray of light passing through it outwards. The light ray parallel to the principal axis spreads outwards, away from the principal axis, diverge and appear as if they were coming from a point. This point of convergence from where the rays of light appear to come after passing through the lens is the principal focus of the concave lens. The distance between the optical center, O, and the focus of the lens is called the focal length of the lens. To show the image formed by a convex lens, take a convex lens and fix it on a stand. Place it on a table and place a lighted candle at a distance of about 50 centimeters from the lens. Also, place a white screen on the table on the other side of the lens. Adjust the distance of the screen from the lens to get the image of the candle flame on the screen. Try to obtain the image of the candle on the paper screen on the other side of the lens. You may have to move the screen towards or away from the lens to get a sharp image of the flame. Now, alter the distance of the candle from the lens. Try to obtain the image of the candle flame every time on the paper while altering the distance and record your observations. The conclusions of the activity can be summarized as When the object is far away from the lens, the image formed is real and inverted. As the object is brought closer to the lens, it becomes bigger and moves further away from the lens. When the object is very close to the lens, the image can no longer be formed on the screen. Now, repeat this activity with a concave lens. You will find that for all distances of the object from the lens, a concave lens forms an erect, diminished and a virtual image of the object on the same side of the lens as the object. White light All of us enjoy the sight of a rainbow. A rainbow is a band of seven colors, namely violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red. When white light falls on a prism, it splits into a band of seven colors. These are the colors of the rainbow. Sir Isaac Newton performed an experiment and named these screen colors as spectrum. The phenomenon of breaking of white light into a band of seven colors is called dispersion. Rainbow also occurs due to the phenomenon of dispersion. The droplets of rainwater act as the prism. The beam of white light on passing through the prism from one surface to another disperse it into seven color on the screen provided in front of the prism. Differences between convex and concave lens Convex lens, concave lens It is thicker in the middle and thinner at edges. It is thicker at the edges and thinner in the middle. When the lens is held close to the object, it forms a virtual, erect and magnified image. When the lens is held close to the object, it forms a virtual, erect and diminished image. When the lens is held away from the object, it forms a real and inverted image. The image may be magnified or diminished depending upon the distance of the object from the lens. When the lens is held away from the object, it forms a virtual, erect and diminished image for all the positions of the object. Used to correct long-sightedness or myopia. Used to correct short-sightedness or hypermetropia. Take a circular piece of white cardboard and paint seven sectors on it with seven colors. Insert a pencil through the center of the disc formed. Now, it looks like a top. Spin this top very fast and observe the color of the disc. Surprisingly, it appears white. Hence, it is clear that seven colors combine together to form white color. Conversely, white color is made up of seven colors of the rainbow. This disc is called the Newton's disc.